starting again. So tell me about this character. It's what it's it's fourteen fourteen dollars. Fuck you. No, that was me. Uh, I accidentally may have accidentally revealed my credit card number. I just did, I just did that. Yep. So that stream is gone forever. Four, four digits of the number and the expiration date. So, it should be fine. not enough for people to steal my steal anything and it's and it's deleted anyways so if I get I, I, I'll get it report I don't use that credit card that often I think I just bought some Lewis to it so It's just one place set. I spent, oh.
Mr. Your Cat. Two ninety nine, it would be funny, but they charged me fourteen dollars for it. I thought I was getting a bundle of them, a bundle of these play sets, and I only got one. Yes. Ugh. No, I thought I was getting a bundle of these fiasco play sets, but I, I got one and the fiasco play set and the book and the fiasco rule set, but I already have the fiasco. I already have the book fiasco rule set. I've, I've had it for years. I didn't need to buy another, uh, buy it again. So. I mean, yeah, it is giftable, so you can get it. It's fine. I mean, it's a good place set, you know, so it'll be fun to play with, but it's, you know, they charge too much. Don't worry about it. Did you read that Daredevil, uh, the Daredevil TV show is coming back for, uh, yes, Callie, that is a, a curious statement. Yep, they've just announced, they've just announced they're going to do a new one for, um, Disney Plus.
Oh, I, 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 oh, I didn't see that part. You know, it's funny because in the comics, um, okay, in the comics, Spider-Man's uh, closest friends in the superhero community are, um, well, Johnny Storm and Daredevil. So, several times it's implied that uh, Johnny Storm and Peter Parker are best friends. I, I know it's weird. Because in the comics, because in the comics, Johnny Storm and Peter Parker are about the same age, and uh, they met when they were teenagers. So, and uh, Johnny was the first one to cross over with Spider-Man. So, oh, I'm always ashamed. I'm always, it, it always. That that friendship doesn't doesn't we don't ever really get to see that adapted that friendship because it's a fun friendship. Um, okay, Opus. Here is a shocking revelation, and this is a something a little bit new to the canon. Are you aware, Opus? Da, 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 that Spider-Man has a sister. Teresa Parker. Teresa Parker. And surprisingly, for kind of a, a hokey twist, it's been pretty popularly received. To keep the Piper Parker, PB Parker, yeah, to keep the PP name. I really liked that. Uh... <laughs> Not a fan of the name. It's a... Well, it's PP. Peter Parker. Uh, you know, it's funny. Stanley said uh, he did that because all the original Marvel superheroes have PP. They have like um, all the superheroes that Lee worked on, all except Iron Man. Uh, all the superheroes that Lee created except Iron Man, which is weird, uh, are, have double, have alliteration names, so it's, uh, uh, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, uh, Peter Parker, uh, Bruce Banner, uh, I forget what it's in, what it is. Stephen Strange, Matt Murdock, yeah. So, uh, Marvel had a fairly unique structure in writing, in that, um, so how it, how it essentially worked is there was three, uh, essentially, like, um, uh, uh, Stan Lee would come up with the plot of the comic, and then he would leave it to the artists to come like Stanley would come up with a gen like he would go okay like general outline of what was going to happen and then he would leave it to the artist to decide the to draw draw uh, how they felt and then Stanley would return to write dial 
to write dialogue for it. So it's what what happens is it, it, that's called the Marvel method, and it meant that Marvel could get a lot of comics done really fast. But it also makes it really hard to figure out who exactly created what for superheroes for a lot of Marvel superheroes. So like Stanley, so like Stanley said, okay, he was for a while, he was kind of the general plotter, and then eventually, but the people who really figured out like the nitty gritty details of it all were the were the artists, and then Stanley would write the dialogue, and who did what has been debated for years because of that. And what seems obvious is that people did different things at different times, so. But it makes it hard to really give anybody definitive creator status on any of the superheroes because they all, you know, contributed. So, said is essentially the reason why so many superheroes and superheroes have like those double names is because he kind of just couldn't remember remember all the names he couldn't remember all the names so like that was just a little his like his cheat sheet for like okay so pp was spider-man bb was hulk But uh, it leads to kind of funny things where it's like, um, he couldn't actually remember uh, what Hulk's name was, so, um, he would occasionally call, he would occasionally call him, uh, Bob, or Robert Banner, instead of Bruce Banner. Because he couldn't kind of quite, you know, like, because couldn't, he couldn't, he was working like, you can't quite remember who, he couldn't remember the name. So, to fix that, they uh, made, made a canon that Hulk's full name is actually Robert Bruce Banner. So, tell me of your methods. So, why was I bringing this up? Oh, right, I had this idea a little bit a while ago. And the basic idea is it's the backstage. It's the backstage world.
Like what, theoret what theoretically could a group of superheroes be? Is he's very famous. How's it going, banana? How's it going, Mr. Banana? Do you like my cool swanky new setup? There's me sitting here, relaxing. So what you doing is just the self Mr. Bananas. Look how I'm so, I'm so relaxed. The most relaxed I've been in my life. Like, you can't really see my face now. Oh, well. Well, I guess I can.
So what's going on? to say I love boots. Boots are so good. Oh. You have no idea how sick I was of like just sitting up at Kelly remains TV. Yes, Kelly, you are number four. Historical fun fact. Uh, Harry S. Truman, our president, our I forget what number of president he was. Uh, he uh, he didn't he didn't have a middle name. have a middle name yet he just had it his middle name was just S his middle name was just S and the reason for that was um, because both of his grandfather's names started with S and his parents didn't want to commit to naming them after either of them, so they would just lie and say, Oh yeah, it's named after you. Is it uh, bazooka? Is it uh, Smith and Weston? Is it Paul uh, Andrews?
I wanted to change my name. I think I would change it to I use the last name Andalusia on it for many people. You know, Andalusia also has sort of like almost a little bit of like the kingdom of Andalusia almost has like kind of Everybody, bum bum bum. 
America is most likely not named after America Vespucci. Shock and awe. Because I'm, um... Okay, because here's the thing. If they were named after America Vespucci, uh, we would, uh, we, we never, uh, we would be calling this land, uh, the, the Vespuccia, uh, Vespuccia, probably, if they were named after it. See, the thing, the, the, see, the thing is, uh, royalty, uh, non-royals never, you never name, uh, you never name, um, you, the last names are always given, uh, if you name something after somebody, uh, who's not a royal, you give it, you, uh, you use their family name. So, um, so it's like, cause Pittsburgh is named, like the city of Pittsburgh is named after William Pitt, who was the prime minister of England. So Pittsburgh, whereas like, uh, whereas like Georgia was named after King George. So, what they believe is, and here's the most shocking twist of all, America Vespucci was not called that. That's not a name he would go, that's not the name he went by. Yeah. That's not the name he would go by. Uh, I believe he went by uh, uh, Gino or something. America is in fact a I forget what, it, what the name he actually went by. Uh, what they actually believe where the name comes from is a mountain range is, is a mountain range in South America called the uh, the the Amerka Mountains. It's called the Amerka Mountains. I believe is how you say it. And they believe that's where the actual name comes from. So, it's actually not really that offensive of a name, if that's the origin, because it, it, it's, it's a native word meaning. Uh, the natives did. It was the name the natives gave the mountains. So, uh, or the first name, you know, the people there. So he wrote that. He wrote that down, and that's. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it, here's the thing I've I've, I've read from like First Nations peoples. For, uh, the First Nation people, and, and what they actually want to be called is by the tribe names. You know, they're you know, their cu the cultures are not, you know, you know, there's there's no one great monoculture, and uh, you know, in uh, in First Na in First Nation ideology, you know, there wasn't. Exactly, exactly. Well, it should... Uh, indigenous is a name... But then again, indigenous is also, like... Uh, it's kind of dehumanizing in a way, if you think about it, because, you know, indigenous people are... Uh, you know, indigenous usually means, like, animals and plants, you know, they're not necessarily people. Uh, I always... I always go with First Nations. Is 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 the nomenclature I go with usually, just because that to me seems the most like logical, you know. And if I know where what tribe they're from, then I would say that.
Yeah, well, it, it's just the most logical one. It, it just makes the most sense to me, because it's, it's the most logical one, but, you know, that, that turns to be come outdated as much as possible. You know? And, you know, and to say, you know, quite obviously, I'm not first, you know, I don't, I'm not First Nation. You know, I'm not a first, I'm not First Nation, I'm not, I'm not First Nation person, so me speaking authoritatively on, on these subjects is a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit hard, it's a little bit hard to, you know. I have recently, I have been making an effort recently to learn about pre-Columbian history and of native people, but it's, it's hard. What, what makes it really hard, especially, is um, the Spanish. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So what were you going to say? What was your controversial opinion? It is. It is. It is disrespectful. In fact, um, Indian is. Per In fact, many Na uh, many First Nations actually prefer Indian to to Indian to Native American. Even though it's inaccurate, but you know. Uh, you know, First Nation history is, you know, pre the pre Columbian history of the Americas is, in fact, incredibly fascinating. Also incredibly frustrating that we lost so much of it. Yeah. I mean, in the end, there's only, like, you know, the problem is, you know, we're talking about a whole nation, you know, we're talking about a whole continent of people. And it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a ridiculous thing where it's like, It's in fact kind of ridiculous to like go like, you know, like imagine if you went like, like, uh, I, I, I guess we have Europeans, Asians, Africans, but it's kind of like, it's kind of ridiculous to go like, yeah, all, you know, all the Europeans are the exact same sort of people or all the Asians are the exact same sort of people. Exactly, exactly. It, it's just, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Although, interestingly, oh. Or the Europeans, or, you know, I... It, which would be crazy, because Europe has such, like, a wide range in history that's insane. Um, what was I about to say? Oh, 
well, you know, interestingly, though, this is a field of study for a while. in fact may have written may, European and get this Indian culture may have all originated from one place It's not even a possibility. Let me introduce you to the Indo-Europeans. So let's start with an interesting uh, coming from uh, 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 the Baltic, coming from the Baltic steppes. Here, here's, in fact, here's a, here's a map theorizing where where they all originated from. So here's here, here's here's what here's what they believe happened. This, is, this right here is the Caspian Steppe. It's a, it's a Caspian Steppe. Uh, and they believe a, a culture, they believe uh, a culture of people call, who, assign, uh, who researchers in this call the Krugak, the Krugak people, slowly, progressively migrated out, out, out of this, out of the, out of here and began to slowly but surely dominate uh, dominate most of the no, no, known world. Now, how do we know this? Well, there's there's a few possibilities. And it's a um, and the thought process kind of goes like this. Um, uh, and this initially comes from linguists and ethologists. And the linguists began to notice that a lot of like languages, uh, languages and mythology seemingly shares very similar traits to it. Like if you if you think about like a, a lot of European mythologies, like ancient mythologies, they all have a similar. They all have a few like recurring themes, and one is a is a is, there's a sky father figure. Next, there's a uh, the sky father figure always always has a son always has a son who 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 is more active active in defend defending the world. So think about this: Herc uh, Zeus, Zeus, Odin, Odin, from uh, uh, from I should know this. My culture got it. All kind of occupy similar roles, and then if you look, and then there's say Hercules, Hercules, Thor, Hercules, Thor, as such. Now, but, but the big thing is 
they've noticed that a lot of languages have very similar like words to it. And uh, they've been tracing, and linguists are pretty sure are are seemingly like breaking the origin down, and they've uh, and they've been finding, and what and what they've been able to, what they're pretty sure they've been able to establish is a is a cultural philosophy, a, a, a cultural philosophy and history, and what what they think it is is that the Indo-European Whoever the Indo-European people were had almost a religious. Whoever occupied the step almost had a religious. Had a religious ceremony, religious uh, rite of passages, where the young men of the tribe, when you hit 16, would form war bands and ride out to prove prove their mettle. And they think that this, uh, and they call this a, a crown. Forgetting the names. Uh, what they think what happened is they con with this they they uh, drove out and began to conquer parts of ancient European cultures. So what's what's interesting to look at is, um, and if people are kind of curious, uh, right here. Where they think a lot of it came from. That's the UK. So, uh, you know, thought process there. So they think what happened is uh, they think what happened is uh, they went out and uh, these war bands would either conquer or be assimilated into cultures that existed already here. Uh, and they believe, like, like say the, uh, you know, there's belief like that say, theoretically, they theorize that the Romans may have been uh, are, are Indo-European, and there's a few others that they theorize are possibly Indo-European. Now, unfortunately, there is some. Uh, I should point this out. It's I, 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 I generally, I, I think this could possibly be a very true thing, but I will say this. There are some very racist people who have taken this, taken this idea of a pure race thing to unfortunate uh, places, and I don't think that's true. I just, I just think that um, if we look up step, if we think about step cultures, like the most famous step culture is, uh, well, I would say arguably the most famous step culture is uh, the people of the step are the Mongolians, and uh, the step. See, the thing is, people who live in the steppe did this quite a lot. And we have, we have, you know, the Mongolians, the Turks, both the Rorans all did that. They all left, they all left the, the steppe to conquer other places. So it's not that unreasonable to think that a, that sometime in the past, people of the steppe did it, did it before, you know? Uh, by the way, if you don't know what a step is, as I, I didn't know for a little while, uh, a step is a um, is a uh, grass is a place uh, with very little trees and mostly uh, grass. Anyways, so that's the Indo-Europeans. Uh, an interesting, very possible theory about the origin of European culture. And now you may be asking yourself, well, where are the, what, who are the old, old Europeans? Well, there are old we, uh, uh, in European Indian culture. Uh, you know, well, there is interesting things about that. Old Europeans still do exist. Um, there's things like the. Uh, The Finns, the fin, the uh, the, bulk, uh, the the Finns and the Sami people of Scandinavia are most likely uh, remnants of the old of uh, the old Europeans, as are um, uh, who, who, who doesn't have an Indo-European Etruscans. 
the Etruscans of Italy didn't have Indo-European, or don't have an Indo-European base language, so they theorize that they're not, the Etruscans were part of the, uh, were, were part of that system. Uh, who were the, who were the Etruscans? Uh, they were the power players in Rome for, in Italy before Rome, and if you're curious where the name Tuscany comes from, which is a very famous province in Rome, it comes from the Etruscan people. Then again, I don't get paid very well. I don't get paid very well to pair with. Yeah, I probably would. I'd probably be a job that would pay quite a lot. Yeah, people make people make more. But then again, you know, it's not all about money. Isn't it? Isn't it fun? And then you get attacked by idiots who are like, wait, I don't want, I don't want my kid, kid to learn about. One of them is going on about like uh, how uh, all right, like they want to like remove discussion of race from history. And I'm like, well, oh, guys, like I don't really know how how you can talk about slavery without bringing up the subject of race. That's what they want to do. Right? Right? Isn't that crazy? Like, I don't know. Feel, it feels like that was... Yeah. Yeah. It feels... Oh, but that's like the big political push now is they want to get rid of it. They want to get rid of the discussions of that where it's just like, I don't know how you can bring it up. I don't know how you can bring it up. Like, how can you, like, discuss, like, the first... Yes. Oh, well... Well, Opus... Don't you understand? They're gonna... But the boy, Opus... The boy in the striped pajamas. So sad. I hate to break. I hate to break. I, I'm going to have to hate to break it to the homophobes in the world. But, um... <laughs> you hear talk... You're, I don't know if kids who hear about like the extreme struggles that like LGBT people have to go through in history to like even be considered human, um, and kids hear that and they still go like, 
Yeah, no, I still want to do it. I, I, you know, you know, and the kids that hear it go like, yeah, no, it's still worth it. I'm, I hate to break it. I hate to break it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there that they were, they're probably gay. <laughs> they're probably, they're probably into it already. It's just like, it, it's just so crazy, because it's just like, the stuff is already, I hate to break it to homophobic parents who are using this as an excuse to fascistly ban, uh, ban anything that makes them look bad. Pretty, sh pretty sure that, pretty sure that they're already, they're already there. You know, I, I, I hear of like, God, I, you know, you, you hear of things like where, um, like they ban the mouse from being read in schools. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know, mouse, mouse is a graphic novel by Art Spiegelman, and it's a, uh, it is. It's essentially a, yeah, Mausch. It's a graphic novel by Art Spiegelman. It's, it's essentially a, um, it's not essentially, it's, it's a, uh, it's a memoir of his father's experience in the Holocaust. Uh, and what happened. And Yeah, it's it's a it's a very intense. It's a very intense. It's a it's it's the it's the only comic graphic novel comic out here to uh, I don't care about terminology, but uh, to win uh, the Pulitzer Prize. It's intelligent and, and beautiful and horrifying, uh, and it's been used as a teaching tool for years by stu at, at schools because it's a generally like. You know, uh, it's a it's a way to get kids to learn about the real nature of the Holocaust, and it's a good way. Oh yeah, all the time. Uh, and a uh, uh, school board in Tennessee banned it because it had too many adult things in it, and it's like. Well, sorry to break it to you. Sorry to break it to you, Mr. School Board, but um, the Holocaust was not like fun, and it, you can't like really sanitize what the Holocaust is. And kids should really learn the full nature of what it is. And it's like, and I, I you know, I'm certain the book that they're going to replace it with for the Holocaust education. Is uh, the boy in the striped pajamas, which is fucking bullshit. It's a um, the worst thing that ever happened was like, uh, especially people tried to introduce this narrative. It's like, oh, the Germans didn't know what was going on. They were innocent victims of of Nazism, just like just like the just like everybody else. Nobody knew what was going on. It was a surprise. Mm -hmm. 
Don't they, don't they know that absence only education, that's the fucking dumbest thing in the world. Yes. That's what kids will do. Listen to you when you say don't do something. Te teens are known for being very respectful, respectful of that. Teens a hundred percent don't sneak off and have sex. <laughs> Like, the thing about, about, about that is, like, there's so many elements you could look at that. Um, um, it, 
It's, you know, in truth, all that stuff. It's just a plot to control. Um, uh, get into it, but it's just a plot to uh, keep people poor. In many ways, this has always been my thought process. That have to center someone stuff. The only... So this is weird, uh, or complicated, I guess. Um, uh, the only provable way to lift lift people out of poverty is to increase uh, education and uh, financial uh, financial earning power of women. It's the it's the only real way that it's possible. that literally for everybody the way the you want to know how to fix poverty increase the financial uh, the ability of women women uh, especially poorer women to uh, earn money and the way that um, you control that you know and, and well the number one way of, of ensuring that is um, well, uh, ensuring that is that to make sure that uh, women do not have children until they are financially capable of taking care of them. And by that I mean women... Uh, and that I mean is they haven't... Well, I mean, who will they step on and, you know, if suddenly, if suddenly women have earning potential, earning potential, it could also horrifically opus mean that the poor people that they may also want to be placed in government. Uh, they want to. They may want to have leadership positions. Just horrifically, think of it. But. So that's the only way it's that's only the way poverty has ever been really relieved. And that's the only way it will ever be relieved. And abstinence is a strange ploy to essentially keep people in poverty. And you know, there's been other news lately that depresses me too much to think about, so you know. Um a much more obvious ploy. And, you know, in the end, the question of every society, I guess, you know, that's, that's a little, I guess, the question of every, one of the main issues with every society, that, that almost every, like, government system and societal thing has been trying to solve is this. How do we make sure that the people who have the actual, who have the actual talent, to, talent to run, have the actual talent to run things, are the ones who run things? You know. And you know every like new radical government system in, in a way has been trying to fix this problem. trying to answer that question. How do we create... Oh, dang! Hi, Steph! How's it going? Thanks for the rain. How, how was the stream? Woo, Steph! We're having a very, very 
chill stream today. I'm lying here on the couch. I got my wireless keyboard and mouse. How is the stream? How's everybody doing? Hi, I'm Big Puppy Arnson. Oh shit, you guys can actually see my feet. <gasps> the secrets have been revealed. Oh no, I'll get banned from Twitch now. Uh, do writing and art, if people are unfamiliar with me. And today I am I'm feeling very lazy, but I want to stream anyway, so we're just hanging out, hanging out on the couch. So I could have been showing them the whole time. No, what happened was, from my, what happened was, from my understanding, that uh, streamer, like streamers, were specifically. I think it's kind of a ridiculous rule, to be honest, but I think it's one of the dumbest things. Like. Uh, streamers, uh, there was a group of, there was people on stream that were just broadcasting their feet. They got dedicated foot cams, and, you know, and that apparently was offensive to the, the offensive to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, the buckle hat wearing pilgrims uh, that occupy this site, apparently. And whoever the 23 were that were. So they banned it! The stream. Yeah, exactly. Man. Have they not logged on to the hot pools and hot tubs, though? I don't know. Twitch is so weird about that. Oh, oh no, it definitely is a foot. Is a com is a improv theater and com uh, improv theater, improv podcasting theater and stuff. Good people stab. Really? That's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, that sucked. That sucks for that sucks for them. But it's kind of, I can't seriously. Go follow staff. They're good people. Uh, I told everybody we'd have a very chill night. I think that's having a very chill night.
That sucks. That really sucks. <sighs> well, you know, the problem with that is, um, essentially, they're trying, I, I guarantee you that, like, there's no hand picking there. It's just, uh, it's a computer algorithm interpreting something as sexual. She got reported. Maybe they got reported by somebody. I don't know. That does suck. It's... So what's she gonna do? Like, is there a way to appeal that decision? Yeah. No, I guarantee you she got swept up in like some sort of Explicitly go around and drink and fuck up other people, you know? Like, there's that fucking garbage uh, a subreddit, lo Livestream Fails. If you've ever heard of that one, just absolute, absolutely garbage subreddit. It's a popular one, too. And it's all, it's pretty much just dedicated to harassing, like, Twitch streamers. Fortunately, fortunately, you know, I'm, I'm too small, I'm too small for them to, to care all that much, but, you know, it's, it's out there. So tell me this character's name that you came up with. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear it.
Yeah, guys, I love it. So, Alia, Sofia, Elena, Elena, Lucia, Marova, Anya, Garcia. Is this one full name for a person? Phil? Tell me about this character. Who's, who's this character going to be?
Monroe, West, Langley, Madison, Marley's, Alice, Hope, Cassidy, Lopez, Jerkins, Keen, Gonzalez, Keller, Collymore, Stoll, Finnegan, Galen, Pierce, Dawson, Wilson, Adir, Carassus, Anderson, Adams, Carter, um, Dusterfish, Kicklighter, Gannon, Truthbelly, Woodgrip, Casket, Barlow, Cass, Elrod, Witchlock. Horatio Whitrock. Fitch Crawford. Cypress Dragon Lightfoot. Okay, Broken, have a good time. That was a little bit talk to you. Oh, I, I should mention, uh, four, four o'clock my time, we'll be having the art, we'll be having the first art night, so I'll link it in, I'll link it in, I'll, I'll link the Zoom call in the chat when it happens, in my Discord when it happens. Feel free to join! So what's everybody else doing? Are we just having a chill last night?
well. We're going to raid this new person who I have no way. I've never met them and I don't know who they are. They seem cool. 